Shabbat Shalom. It's Reuben Abramov, the Haftorah man. This week, Parshat Shalach. In the Parsha, we read about how Moses sent 12 spies into the land of Israel, and we know the outcome of that. Now, history repeats itself. Moses' successor, Yehoshua, is leading the nation. They are on the east side of the Jordan River. The pack of Jewish people, the camp, is five miles wide, square. It's a huge amount of people. We are going into the land of Israel. Okay, so Yehoshua this time sends two spies into the city of Jericho. Why? Things go in three steps. One, we decide if we're going to do something. Two, we then see how we're going to do it. And three, we're going to go and do it. That's the Israeli way. So here, you see that today, Yehoshua only sends two spies. That is different than the 12 spies. Then, here it starts from the book of Yehoshua. And these two spies go into the city of Jericho. And very, very quickly, they're detected that these spies are in the city. Where did they go? They went to the house of Rachav. Rachav Hazona. So there's many, many interpretations of what a zona is. One, the literal translation, that she was a prostitute, and everybody came to visit her. And you also have the explanation that Rachav had a hotel, an inn, and uh, she would serve baked goods like mizonot. So if you were looking for tarts, this was the place to go. And Rachav now is protecting these two spies that the king's guards have identified that they went into her house. They knock on her door. She says, hey, get upstairs. Hide on the roof. I'm going to hide them. And it says, Vatitz no. She hid, th- not two, not them, but she hid him. But they were two spies. So now what? It is that Pinchas was one of the spies, and Pinchas was angelic, and he was able to disappear himself. So Kalev ben Yefuna was the one that was left that she slid under. She comes to the door. The king's men are there, and they say, turn over the spies. She goes, would love to, but I can't. They left already. They went that away. And she sends them running, and the gates of the city of Jericho close. So she runs upstairs, and she looks at these two guys, and she says to them, let me explain something to you. I just saved you. Now you have to do the same for me. I've been watching the nation of Israel for the past 40 years since they left Egypt, and now they've come to the east of the Jordan River. We, the Jericho people, we can see the camp. It's huge. We know you're coming to destroy us. So now, Mida Keneged Mida. That you have to do what I did for you. I want you to save me, my father, my mother, my brother, my sister, my family. And the spies say to her, sure, no problem. We'll do that. If you tell anyone else and you put anyone else in this house, we're going to burn your house down too. So the agreement was made and they promised that they would keep their word. So now she lowers them. Here's the famous story that she lowers them down on a rope out the window. Watch the spiritual flipping that men used to sneak into her house. Now she says, I am here to save you as men of the Jewish nation. She lowers these people down out of the window. And the agreement is that they will hang a red thread in the window. Yes, This red thread could be the predecessor to the red light district. But it was this red thread that the people, when they came, the Israelites, the Bnei Israel came to destroy the city of Yericho, that they would know not to touch her land, uh, her house. And that the spies then wait, they sneak out of the city of Jerusalem, they hide in the hills like she told them for three days, So the coast is clear, literally the Jordanian coast. And then they go back to the camp with Yehoshua and they tell him that the city of Jericho, the city of Yericho is ours. So this is a great story in the preparation of Bnei Israel coming into their homeland, into Eretz Israel. And what do we see? This woman 
with the worst reputation. However, she acknowledged the existence of God and she said, I'm going to help these people. So what happened with this woman? It says that she converted. It says that she married Yehoshua. And it says from her, eight out of the 48 Nevi'im came. So we watch the Haftorahs as our spiritual guides to think not just by laws of nature, because much of what happened to us was supernatural, but also we look at it to guide us how to think spiritually that we can grow closer to God. Shabbat Shalom. Enjoy the Haftorah.